Great day, everybody. I am attorney Takora Davis, and I am speaking with you all tonight about how to protect your business legally. I'm going to wait a few minutes for people to come in. As you're coming in, I want you to wave at me. Tell me your name, the type of business that you operate. operate. Hey, Misha. Nice to see you. Um, so, hi, Cindy. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, Cindy. I just spoke with you in my DMs, I believe. Janique, nice to meet you. Come on in, guys. Welcome. Come on into the room. Um, I'm really excited to chat with you all. Um, uh, share with me a little bit more about your business. I know that this is an event professionals marketplace. I know that I could be talking to a variety of people within this particular arena. I want to make sure that if I need to kind of tailor my presentation to make sure that I'm hitting on points that are really important to you, that I do just that. So share with me a little bit more about where you're from and the type of business that you're currently operating. And um, that will help me out. And I'm going to take a few notes uh, as people come on in. Hello, hello, hello. So excited, so blessed to be here and so thankful that Lorna asked me to come in and chat with you guys today. So um, I see that people are coming in. Hi, Rochelle. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. So awesome, event planning and design in Orlando, Florida. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Let's see who else. What else do you guys do? I know Misha is a wedding and event planner. I do know that. And she also is an educator. Um, <laughs> I love you. Um, do, does anyone else, in addition to providing professional services, also provide education? Um, I would love to know that as well. Let's see. Yeah. Hi, Stephanie. Hi. Texan Lorna. Hi, Dee. Good evening. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome, Queen. Love it when people address me like that. Dee is the owner of Fierce and Fab Events. You do wedding and events. Hi, Miranda. Awesome. I love talking, talking with so many people. I don't even know why I'm about to apologize for my children, but if you hear them in the background, Y'all understand. Y'all know the circumstances that we are under. <laughs> so um, I'll share with you a little bit more about me as you're coming in. Please share with me where you're from, the type of uh, businesses that you own. Uh, also, let me know if you also provide any education to other business owners, event professionals. Hi, Nika. My prayer partner, her name is Nika. So I just, it's always cool seeing another Nika or Nick, however you pronounce your name. Um, and ATL. Awesome. Hi, Lorna. So eternally grateful, super thankful that you guys have invited me into your space. Hi, Victoria. I want to share a little bit more about me. Uh, I am Takora Davis, owner of V Creators Law Firm and Business Bakery. My law firm is where I work intimately with entrepreneurs and experts to help them protect their business so they can grow it with peace of mind. And I have created another business called Business Bakery, where we provide the sweetest solutions for your online business. So, and a lot of those solutions that we provide are low cost um, legal services, well, legal templates, like contract templates, um, courses, uh, resources to help entrepreneurs. So, oh, all things beautiful events, love it, in Texas. So um, I'm really excited to be able to share my smarts with you all. Um, and, um, what I'm going to be hitting on tonight is really how to protect your brand. I know specifically that your industry has been affected greatly by, um, what's going on with, uh, the coronavirus and, uh, events being canceled, events being rescheduled, probably couples demanding or re requesting refunds. Um, I had to recently, and I'm continuing to work with a client and um, she's in a very similar situation. And so I can explain that a little bit later um, and talk about how we navigated that issue. If there's any topic, anything that you're like to Cora, please, 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 um, please cover this. You know, please let me know, I, you know, and there's like a question that you have and you definitely want me to get on it. Please share that with me because I, I really love to be able to answer anyone's questions. Uh, sometimes having a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me is like 350 bucks. Um, I'm well worth it. 
because I can rescue someone's business in five minutes or less. But um, I love being able to come in groups like this and be able to serve my community and help people. So if there's a question that you're like, I need to make sure that she answers this, you know, hold that, write it down, because at the end, I'm going to have some Q&A. But I want to share with you a few things that you can do to protect your business, particularly in this season. One of the things that you should definitely do is to make sure that you have the best business structure possible. So we'll talk about your the best business structure that I think is necessary. One of the other things that we're going to talk about is also, um, I'm going to touch really briefly on insurance uh, for people in your uh, event professional industry. Um, I'm going to talk briefly about trademarks. Um, and when do I feel it's necessary uh, for you to get a trademark? And then we're also going to touch on contracts as well, um, because I think that that is immensely important, uh, particularly in light of the things that are happening. Um, and at the end, I'm going to share some things that um, I have for you, some freebies and some other resources um, that I have discussed prior with Talorna and in partnership with Event Professionals Marketplace to bring to you all to hopefully support you a little bit more in this particular season. So let's get into it. All right. So in my opinion, event professionals, at minimum, you should form your business um, at minimum as an LLC. An LLC is a limited liability company. A lot of people who are in this industry will operate as a sole proprietor. And as a sole proprietor, you're basically saying, hey, me as an individual, I'm a business. And you may file what's called a DBA or a fictitious business name or an assumed business name at your county register of deeds office that basically says, hey, I'm an individual, I'm Takora, but I'm doing business as creators, event professionals or something like that, whatever your business name is. It's really easy to form, which is why most people form it. Lord, what's wrong with my babies? Okay, it's really easy to form. That's why most people form it, right? Um, but there's drawbacks to that. The drawbacks to having um, a sole proprietorship is that it leaves you and your spouse's income, your income, retirement income, your inheritance, um, your personal property, all of that can be on the line if you get sued, right? And let's talk about it. Some folks, unfortunately, as a result of event cancellations and when courts open back up, some event professionals may be may have already been threatened with lawsuits or they will be sued whenever that happens, right? And so you can put your family in a compromising position as a result of things that are even outside of your own control. And now someone sues you because you're a sole proprietor. They're not suing your business. They're suing you personally. And all of those things are subject to a lawsuit, right? And so you don't want a judge to rule against you and you may not have the money, uh, you know, in your business bank account he's like okay sell your car <laughs> or sell your assets or sell certain things so that you can pay this judgment and so that is the danger um and it's an extreme situation but it happens when you have a sole proprietorship and especially if you don't have insurance which we're going to get to next so that if you're operating as a sole proprietorship i think now during the downtime is a really good time for you to consider is this the right time for me to go ahead and form my business as an LLC, a limited liability company? And if you guys have questions about that, just drop it. Drop it in the comments so that I can answer as I go. Um, so, I mean, I know I said hold it to the end, but I'm like, eh, I may as well answer questions as I go because the law can be like over everybody's head. So if you got questions about sole proprietorships or LLCs, drop it. Now, an LLC pretty easy to form. Most folks don't need an attorney to form it um, unless you're in a complicated jurisdiction. But most people can form an LLC by themselves. Generally, the paperwork is one to two pages. You complete the paperwork, you submit it to your state secretary of state's office, they will review it and they'll be able to get back to you. Now, forming a limited liability company, it's wonderful. It's taxed the exact same if you're a single member LLC, you are taxed the exact same as if you were a sole proprietor, as if you were an individual business. So the taxation standpoint doesn't change that much. 
or at all. But what is different is, remember when I talked about being sued personally? People can't sue you personally. So that's is something we call a corporate veil. That is, um, that is a legal term. And as we all know, the veil covers the bride's face, right? So there's a veil, there's a shield in between the bride and the groom. And so an LLC basically is a corporate veil that goes over the face of you <laughs> and your business. So there's a shield between you as the bride. The LLC is the veil. So if someone wants to sue you, they cannot pierce the veil. They cannot get through to you because the veil is covering you. But guess what happens? If you start to do certain things that poke holes in that veil, like you say, well, I'm going to pay with my business bank account, my mortgage, you're starting to poke holes in the veil because now you're treating that business like your personal bank account. And when you start poking holes through the veil, then it really makes you vulnerable. Um, someone asked, are there annual fees to file an LLC? Generally, they're either annual fees or biannual, meaning every other year. It really depends on your state. Stephanie says, when you're attempting not to commingle business and personal finance, can you have a business account set with direct deposits from a full-time employee so you are not piercing the corporate veil? So, yes. Um, you can do that. Um, it would be good to set up something like payroll, but you can as, let's say for instance, you're an LLC. This is what I did in my business the first year. I was an LLC. I was the only person really working. And so anytime I had to pay myself, I took basically a draw, an owner's draw, which basically is transferring funds from the business account to my personal account. So that was easy and you just keep track of it with bookkeeping and accounting. That's not piercing the corporate veil at all. That's completely and totally okay. Um, so you can totally do that. Now, if you want to transition the LLC to an S Corp, um, that basically, you may have heard the, the term S Corp, you know, and an S Corp is basically a tax designation. You're not going to like submit an S Corp paperwork to your secretary of state is paperwork that you submit to the IRS <laughs> and you're basically saying hey can y'all tax me as an S corp and that basically will lower your taxes generally Ooh, uh, someone says how do you handle filing taxes as an LLC if two people are in a business together you talk to an accountant um, that is not my ministry um, but taxes are not my, my ministry, um, but you would definitely want to talk with an accountant uh, when it comes to that if two people are in business together. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, you have a business, you're getting funds from the business, it'll probably be a Schedule C, um, which is another type of schedule that's attached to your, um, your taxes. Um, so yeah, you're so welcome. Rochelle says, do you get insurance for it? It's just you work in the business. Oh, should you get insurance? I think that you should. And the reason why is, um, listen, if you guys are working uh, and, and you are in this industry, like anything can happen on anybody's wedding day. Um, and so I think you can get insurance or you can go on a site like Thimble, like a Thimble that you used to like. The only thing that I can think of a thimble is like the Monopoly piece or some people used to put a thimble on their, their pink, pinky whenever they were sewing. But it's called thimble and you're able to get like short term event um, insurance. And, and you can also get insurance that covers like contract workers or independent contractors. So my husband and I, we have a cleaning company and we use thimble anytime someone goes out and they're going to clean a residential or commercial property. You can get the insurance to cover you or the person for one day, 30 days, 60, 90, however long you want. And it's pretty affordable. So if you don't want to pay an insurance company every single month, go on a site like Thimble or something like that so you can have that insurance in place. I definitely think it's important to get insurance even if you are the only person working because when you are dealing with events, especially events that people pay tons of money for, you want to have yourself covered. Just roll that into the fee that you charge these folks. <laughs> um, someone asked, how can I add my name to an LLC? I have power of attorney, and if something happens, I do not want to lose the commercial business, which is under the LLC. How can I add my name to an LLC? I have power of attorney. So it sounds like 
Okay, so power of attorney, guys, is a legal document, and there's two types of power of attorneys. You can have a durable power of attorney and a springing power of attorney. So y'all taking me back to my days where I used to do wills for people. Whew. So basically, a durable power of attorney means like, hey, I am acting as this person's I'm, I'm like, this sheet of paper will give me the power to act as if I am that person. So that means that if you have a durable power of attorney, you could technically like go to someone's bank account and make withdrawals on their behalf. You can pay bills on their behalf. You can make some major financial decisions, some even health decisions on their path. Um, what I would always recommend is getting something called a springing power of attorney, which means it springs to life in the event some type of event happens, right? So I would never get a durable power of attorney, even for my husband. No, uh, I would get a springing power of attorney so that in the event, like, God forbid, I'm incapacitated, um, I'm in a coma, he can make decisions for me. So it really depends on what the power of attorney says. Like you can have a healthcare power of attorney, you can have just a general power of attorney, right? And so it depends on the powers that are outlined in the power of attorney. And then whenever it comes to putting your name on an LLC, that sounds like something that should be handled in an operating agreement. So if you don't have an operating agreement, that's definitely something that you need. Did you say simple? Oh, Lord, what did I say? I said a... Um, Victoria, what was I talking about when I said simple? It's under your mother's name. Yeah, I would talk with an attorney um, because I don't know. And it would be difficult for me to know without looking at the documents. Um, Victoria, I said you can get a durable power of attorney or a springing power of attorney. Not sure if that's what you're talking about. Oh, and I said thimble. T-H-I-M-B-L-E. Like the little Monopoly piece, them, the thimble. <laughs> that nobody ever wanted to play with that's what i'm talking about right um and so now is a, is a really good time as we're wrapping up the piece about your business structure like should i remain as a sole proprietor or do i need to shift to an llc if i'm currently an llc is it time for me to file an escort right and so um she was asking about the the um thimble t as in thomas h as in house I is an igloo, M is in Mary, B is in boy, L is in love, E is in event professionals marketplace. Thimble, right? Sorry, that's my southern, my southern draw coming out. <laughs> Thank you, Pierre. Pierre was like, I'm tired of this. I'm about to just type it. <laughs> Thank you, Pierre. Um, so that's what that is, right? And so um, you may want to say, do I need to change or transition my existing business structure? Um, my accountant told me to Cora a sweet number, a sweet spot number to know that you should probably really talk with someone about transitioning your business from an LLC and being taxed as an LLC, then shifting to an S Corp is $35,000. If you can pay yourself $35,000 in a calendar year, then it's probably time to talk with an accountant to shift, especially if an accountant is handling your taxes right now. Ask them, hey, what do you think about me switching to an S-Corp? Why do we care about that? Because I'm tired of giving the government all my money. That's one. Well, that's really the main reason, okay? <laughs> so if you, for instance, have an LLC, and your LLC makes $100,000, right? That was just the revenue. You're going to be taxed on 100K. And so if you have a 15% tax rate, you're going to pay $15,000. But if you have an LLC and then you transition to be taxed as an S Corp and you pay yourself $50,000, you're only going to be taxed on $50,000, not $100,000. So that means that you get to pay the government $7,500, not $15,000. That's a huge difference when it comes to investing more money into your business. Sorry, printer's going off. Investing more money in your business, keeping more money in your household, and things like that. Carolyn says, my husband and I are finalizing our living trust. Will a springing POA with a business partner overrule my husband's POA over me? Probably not. It shouldn't. Um, because there's different kinds. So there's different types of power of attorneys. If you have a healthcare power of attorney um, over your husband, 
excuse me, your husband has a health care power of attorney over you, a health care POA is going to really govern medical decisions, right? And if you have uh, another type of POA, um, then really if something happens to you, then you should have your husband be able to act on your behalf. Um, and I would really look into the, to the terms if you have a, a power of attorney with a business owner, uh, figure that out, like, you know, asexually, right? Because you need to make sure that if you want your husband to handle things with your business in the event you pass on or you're incapacitated or something happens, how do you really want um, those things handled? And so it's really good to have an intimate relationship and speak with an estate planning attorney. Those are great, great, great people to have on hand, especially during this time. Uh, Tawanda says that she shifted to an S Corp last year. Best decision ever. Listen, me too. Me too. Best decision ever. And um, I spoke with my first accountant. I, I in my first year of business, I, I was you know before I launched my own law firm, I had um, you know a job, and then I got laid off. And so the accountant that we had was really a family accountant. So she wasn't used to dealing with entrepreneurs, especially if you're working with someone and now you're, you become an entrepreneur, it's different. And so when I asked her about switching to an LLC, you know, I'm sitting up here like, uh, I, I asked her about, hey, should my business switch to an S Corp? You know, last year we were in LLC, this year things are doing pretty good. It looks like we're gonna make way more income. She said, no, mm -mm. Don't talk, you know, don't don't talk to me about that until your revenue is around three hundred thousand dollars in a year. And I was like, that don't that don't feel right. Like my legal, like you all know we have a women's intuition, Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it. Lawyers have a legal intuition. And so something in the pit of my gut was like, that doesn't make sense. Like that doesn't feel right. But I trusted her because I'm like, I'm not an accountant. And that tax bill that I got the next year was incredibly rude. Okay. And I'm like, oh, that didn't look like the taxes that I paid the first year I was in business because I had doubled my income and I should have been taxed as an S Corp. Anyway, I've forgiven her and I'm moving on. But really, got to get a really good accountant, someone who understands your industry understands what it's like to be an entrepreneur you know uh yes the s corp will protect your personal assets because remember you'll have an llc it's just taxed as an s corp an s corp is just basically a tax designation you know it's just like okay can you give my business a gold star i'm an llc put the s corp sticker on top of it you still an llc you just tax as an s corp Okay, so that's what that is. So we talked about the best business structure. I think really now is a really good time to look into that. We talked about insurance. The next thing that I want to talk about is like one of my first loves in law, and that is trademarks. Trademarks will protect your business name, logo, tagline. Um, it's really going to allow you to stand out in the marketplace. A trademark is going to help you gain immediate brand awareness and market share. You might say, okay, well, that sounds great. But what the heck is it? A trademark is a mark. Remember, a mark is a word, symbol, name, logo used in connection with your trade. A trade is a business. So that's where the word trademark comes from. This is what you want. Uh, this is your business name. This is your business tagline. This is your business logo. I've helped at least one of the people who are on here tonight trademark her name. We're in the process of doing that, right? And that is going to allow you to have exclusive ownership over that name that you're using in connection with promoting your products and services. Okay. Rochelle says, is it the same as copyright? No, it is not. <laughs> Great question, though. A copyright protects your creative works or your literary works. So a copyright will help you protect books that you write ebooks that you write. Um, a copyright will help you protect songs, podcasts, um, materials, um, social media posts. Um, it will also help you protect photography, videography, um, you know, obviously photos, right? So that's what a copyright will help you protect. Um, and in fact, everything that you do that fall when, fell within that category, it's already copyrighted from the moment that you create it. Copyright is already attached. Like if you take your phone and click and you have a picture in your phone, that picture is copyrighted already. 
That's why if you create a website, you can put a copyright notice at the bottom because the website is copyrighted. Now, what we encourage is strategic registration of some copyrights. Why? Nobody knows that I'm the owner of the copyright of all these photos in my phone, right? So if you have a business where uh, some type of creative work or book is something that you um, have put out there for the world, then you may want to register it. This comes into play a lot with photographers and videographers and people like that. And sometimes even wedding, tra traditional wedding pros, right? And so, um, you know, that that's what the copyright does. Um, so in courses, a lot of people will copyright their courses and things like that. Um, so that's the difference between a trademark, which will protect your brand name and give you exclusive ownership over a brand name and a copyright, which will protect the content. So if I had a book in front of me, I, I wrote a book. Where's my book at? This is around his own. I wrote a book. And so the contents of my book, the chapters of my book, those are all eligible for copyright. If I created a book series, meaning the same book that I wrote had the same title, I could create. I could trademark the title of my book. Some people think you write one book and you can trademark the title. Sorry, that's a lie. <laughs> Your book has to be a book series or you need to offer some other product or program or service in connection with the book name. So you think about the Harry Potter series or Goosebumps that I used to read when I was a little girl or something like that. That can be eligible for a trademark. D said, you're rebranding and definitely interested in a trademark. I love it. Where do you go to trademark your logo? Um, you can go to the United States Patent and Trademark Office to trademark your logo. Um, and so that is the government entity that is able to uh, review applications for trademarks. If you created a unique invention, they'll look at your patents. And then there's a separate office for copyrights. It's the U.S. Copyright Office. And I'm going to provide you all with a link for something that can help you um, do that on your own. Aesthetically pleasing says, do you have to have partners to have an LLC? No, you don't have to have partners to have an LLC. You can have a single member LLC. Deandra says, I may have missed it, but I want to legitimize my business. What are my first steps? I haven't done anything. I don't even have a tax ID or insurance yet. Also, I do event planning and treats, baking. What's the best way to do this? Please help. Deandra, Deandra, sorry if I'm saying the name incorrectly. Let me know what state you're in. So um, one of the first things, like I said, that you want to do is once this is done, go back and watch from the very beginning because I really hit on that. Um, so if you want to legitimize the business, being an individual sole proprietor is a legal entity. It's just really, in my opinion, not the best. And so I talked about the differences in LLCs and trademarks. And so make sure you go back within the first few minutes because I laid it out step by step. And um, yeah. So Carolyn, no, you wouldn't copyright a logo, right? So, so there's two different types of copywriting. So you'll see copywriting that is C-O-P-Y- W-R-I-T-E-R. -E and that's like someone writing the copy on your website, you know, uh, people who are hired to put your words together. And then the legal copyright is C-O-P-Y-R-I-G-H-T. That is where you would go to copyright your contents of your book or some type of creative work. Some people think, well, I can copyright my logo and I don't have to trademark it. All you're doing when you copyright a logo is saying, I'm just protecting how this logo looks. You are not telling the world that you have exclusive ownership over this copyright, or excuse me, over this logo in connection with your business. That's the power of a trademark. The trademark is going to tell the world, hey, this is my business name. This is my logo. You can't use this business name in connection with your business if you're doing the same thing that I'm doing. So this is how we can have Dove Chocolate and Dove Soap. It's the same name, two different companies. Because Dove Soap is a different type of product that's registered in a different trademark class, which is class three. And Dove Chocolate is a different type of product from soap. And it's registered in class 30. There are 45 different classes that you can register your trademark in. It's wild. <laughs> And I don't know all of them, um, but the, the different classes will allow you to say, hey, I have this business name 
And if I can register in this one class, even if someone else in a different class has the exact same name as me, I may not be confusing. It may not confuse people. The whole thing about trademarks is that we don't want to confuse prospective customers and clients. That's why you have to have an analysis done of your name and make sure that that name isn't too close to a registered trademark. Um, and this is important. You can only trademark a federal trademark if you are providing services across state lines. If you're only providing services in your state and, you, and, and your clients are only in your state, you're not eligible for a federal trademark. That's why trademark attorneys can practice and have clients all over the country because we are practicing federal law. And federal law is governed by the executive branch of the government underneath the presidential branch. And that's why it's the United States Patent and Trademark Office and Congress governs interstate commerce, meaning business transactions across state lines. So that's why trademarks fall underneath that umbrella of the executive branch. Same thing with copyrights. Someone says, can someone claim copyright on a product name by just listing it on their website? Gina, they can, well, you don't copy, remember, you don't copyright a product name, you'll trademark a product name. Now, some people can post it and they can put a little TM symbol next to the name, but that doesn't mean that they have a federal trademark. It doesn't mean that they have full ownership rights over the name. It just means that they put a TM symbol next to it. People do that all the time, but it doesn't mean that they have a trademark. And here's the thing, y'all. It, it doesn't matter if you ch someone said to check with your name, check with your state to see if your company name is available first and register it. You have to do more than that. Remember, I gave the example of Dove Chocolate Dove Soap. Someone can have the exact same business name as you in your state, but that doesn't mean that you're not able to use the name. If I had someone and they created a business. And for example, I have a client, their business is called Closet Rehab. They went to file their LLC and someone else had the exact same name filed and registered. And they're like, oh my gosh, what's going on? I said, let's just calm down, first and foremost, let's look. The Closet Rehab that was registered with the state was a clothing company. My client was closet rehab and they come in and they re redo people's closets. They do interior design. So closet installation and interior design is a completely different type of service offered or product offered than clothing. They're in two, same name, providing two different services in the same state and they're completely okay with operating their businesses because there's not going to be a high risk if there's any risk at all of trademark infringement or brand confusion. How long is the trademark process? Uh, I would say you want to you wanna bank on, on the federal process 9 to 15 months. It's not overnight. Not overnight at all. So that's why you want to, if you hire an attorney, you want to get a skilled trademark attorney who knows what they're doing. So I, I in my law firm, I have another person that works for me but I only do trademarks. That's all I do. So everything from registrations to enforcement to brand confusion, all that type of stuff. Uh, in the past three years, I've probably filed over like 316 trademarks. I have a 98.5% success rate. So um, it's, a, it's a long process. So just know some people self-file. Some people do it themselves. Cool. But just know you're in for the long haul. Nika says, can you run two separate businesses? Hey, Tasia, can you run two separate businesses under the same LLC if it's in the same related industry? Yeah, you can do that. Um, and that's probably the best way to do it, especially because if they're in the same industry, then the risk level is probably going to be similar. What you don't want to do is have the same business, uh, same, same, like you have an LLC and then you have like two DBAs. You're doing business as, you know, t-shirt company underneath the same LLC name and then you're doing business as a baker, right? Because there's two different type of risk associated with that. You can have a million dollar t-shirt company, a $25,000 baking company, and they're all really the same company because you're operating it under the LLC and you give somebody food poisoning with a cupcake and they're like, 
oh, I'm going to sue you. They're not going to just sue you on and try to get or recoup that 25K that you brought in from your cake business. They're going after that one million that comes from the t-shirt business too. So you have to analyze, is it time for me to separate these two things out? Do they have the same level of risk associated with it? Does my insurance cover all this stuff? Carolyn says, should I take my name away from my business name? My business is Beautiful Memories by Carolyn. Should I just drop the by Carolyn? I think that's a decision that you need to make. You know, I don't know. I'm, I think that it just really depends on how people resonate with that. Um, that might be a really good thing for you to keep. You might really absolutely love it. Um, so I can't say that you should or you shouldn't do that, um, especially if it's helping people identify your business. Uh, LaShawn says, it's finally time for me to move over to LLC from the sole proprietor. Is there an event planning category or do we fall under something else like entertainment? So when you file an LLC, generally they're not going to ask for a category. They might say, hey, what type of services do you provide? And you'll just say, hey, I'm an event planning professional. But it's not like a trademark where you have all these different categories, right? So that's different. So when you file an LLC, that is through the... Um, when you file an LLC, that is through the Secretary of State's office. When you file a trademark, that's through the United States Patent and Trademark Office, right? So it's two separate processes. Son, Son Valletta, you ask, is a trademark costly? Costly is, is relative, right? So it just depends. Do you value ownership over your brand name? Do you want to have full ownership over this piece of property? Um... Do you feel that this is a family business that can pass down from generation to generation? Trademarks are the only piece of intellectual property that you and your family can own forever. Patents will expire after 21 years. Copyrights will expire after the person who owned or created the copyright passes plus 75 years. Trademarks, only thing you can own forever. You can pass a trademark or bequeath it in a will. You can give it as a piece of property. You can create a licensing program with a trademark so people can pay you to use their your trademark on their website. There's a lot of stuff that you can do with a trademark. So it's not just something where you're like, it's, it's an investment. It's a piece of property. Just like a home is a piece of real property under the law, your car is personal property. A trademark is intellectual property. So people sometimes they're like, oh, wait, I don't, they don't value a trademark because you can't touch it, but it's the most valuable brand asset you own. Trust me, let somebody take your business name and start confusing your clients and start, and people start thinking that your event planning company is trash because it's the same name as somebody else. And you'll see how valuable that trademark is to you. And guess what? The bad part about it is if you don't have a trademark, you can't tell somebody to stop using the name. Like if you have a business in this state, in North Carolina, you're serving people in North and South Carolina, Virginia, in Georgia, and then somebody comes along in Alabama, create the exact same business name as you, start serving clients, those clients are thinking, well, hey, I, I thought that you guys were the same business, it's a different chain, and then they start giving a poor experience, then they start leaving you negative reviews, and then you're like, hey, Alabama company who's infringing on my trademark, can you stop? And they're going to be like, no, you don't even own the federal trademark. Uh, Jewel, you said, I changed my business structure from sole proprietorship to LLC. Do I need to go back and dissolve the sole proprietorship? No, because you don't really dissolve a sole proprietorship. There's no formal documentation that goes with dissolution. You just keep doing a darn thing with the LLC. Yes, you need to get a new EIN for the LLC. You can't have the same EIN for the sole proprietorship as you have for the LLC. Why? Because it's two different businesses. Your EIN as a sole proprietor was for one business structure, which was you operating as a business owner. Your EIN for the LLC is needed because it'll be completely separate. All right. Uh, on my job, you have legal aid so you can go through them. Oh, I don't, um, maybe that's, yeah, that might be a perk to your job because traditional legal aid, they don't provide legal services like that. Um, so that might be something that you have a connection with your job. 
Victoria says, if I'm relocating to a different state, how do I handle my LLC if I really want to retain my LLC name? You just form a new, you can do it two different ways. You form what's called a foreign LLC in the new place that you're going to, but you probably don't need to do that. Um, what you need to do is just form the LLC in the new state, dissolve it in the old state. Make sure you take care of whatever taxes you need to stay, take care of in the other state. But you don't need to do anything except form the LLC in a new place that you're going to. Because that's where your headquarters moved. D'Angelo says, this is great information. You're so knowledgeable and easy to listen to and comprehend. I'm glad I caught this live. Thank you. She's like five stars. Recommend it. <laughs> ah. Anita says, if you have a confirmed trademark, can someone your name as their domain and can you stop oh can someone use your domain as their domain and can you make them stop maybe it depends sorry to give you a lawyer answer but it really depends on what that name is yes if you have a trademark federally registered and someone comes after and then they take your brand name and they put it in a domain name especially if they're rerouting your potential customers and traffic to them that's called cyber squatting that's illegal it's a federal offense yes you can stop them and get that domain name back Abena says, not sure what state you're in, but can I use you in Georgia? Yes, it just depends on what it is that you need support with. Um, so yes, I can provide you with trademark legal services if you're in Georgia. I can provide that to anybody. Yes, I've helped others form businesses. Um, and we do provide contract drafting services through my firm. So my the other attorney who works with me, um, she's licensed in multiple states. Marilyn, can you keep your EIN number from one state to a different state? Yes, as long as the EIN number is still associated with the LLC. You don't need to form a new LLC. Again, remember, the LLC is just moving from one state to the next. It's like, you know, when someone's like, oh, the headquarters of Amazon is moving from one place to the next. They're not, they're not taking, they're not like dissolving the EIN. They're keeping it, right? So you can keep your EIN too. Victoria says you're loaded. That's a lot in his brain. <laughs> There's a lot in his brain. Yes, I'll leave my contact information in a second. Yeah, that's so sweet. All right, cool. We moving and we're grooving, right? And so I'm going to give you a few tidbits on contracts. Um, I am going to share with you. No, um, Tawana, am I licensed in Florida? No. I am licensed to practice law in North Carolina. But when people come to me for trademarks, I can represent people anywhere in the world be, um, because I practice federal law. Um, I will, um, maybe I will provide my contact information. Yes, ma'am. I'll make sure that I update the caption. So it has the contact information. I'm also going to drop some links for some freebies that I have for you guys. And I may as well just do that now. Um, just so people can, um, have it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is because I, I know that, um, and I wanted to get to this. I don't think that I'm going to be able to get to it in a way that I really, really want tonight is to talk about, can I make a comment? Thank you. Sorry, I'm on my laptop. So I'm doing a free legal consultation this Thursday where I'm diving deep into the top five clauses that you need to have in your contract, especially in light of the coronavirus. And so that's a special link um, that I created for um, event pros. So if you guys have time this Thursday, It'll be 9 a.m. Pacific time, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I may um, do a replay, but I'm going to really dive deep into what you guys need to look out for in these contracts. And especially there's one provision that people keep forgetting in the contract. And so I want to make sure that I'm able to share that with everybody because... I think it was getting a lot of people stuck and it's not the force majeure clause. It's something else. So a lot of people have a force majeure clause, but it's not comprehensive. Um, Victoria, you said you're confused. You're a sole proprietor. You became an LLC last year. Your EIN remained the same. That's because you didn't, you didn't create a new EIN. That's why. I mean, I'm saying that you should, maybe you were advised differently. Some people keep the same EIN, but I would double check that because you your EIN is associated generally with the business entity. And when you go from a sole proprietor to an LLC, that's two different business entities. And they both should have their own EIN. Um, 
Michelle, if you're in the Caribbean, no, it's not the same for you as with the trademark. The young lady who works for me, she's from, is she from Barbados? Yeah, she's from Barbados. She's just so beautiful and so nice. So anyway, one of the things that we hope to do is to get her some training in how to form uh, trademarks in the Caribbean or Car Caribbean. Sorry. Um, so trademarks are jurisdictional. So that means that there's trademarks that govern the entire United States. There's trademarks that govern certain areas in Europe, Australia, um, South America, the Caribbean. So you'll want to file your trademark in the different places where you're doing business. Chibuzar, you said, how do I combine my Zoom business name and my LLC as one business? They're currently on different names and different websites. Well, I think that's more of like a strategic business decision, right? So if you have, well, what you could do is if you want the LLC to be the same, like, I guess if you want the assumed business name to fall underneath the LLC, you just need to file a new assumed business name document that says, hey, my LLC is now doing business underneath this assumed business name. That's probably what you can do. Um, Vanessa says you need to retain me for trademark infringement for your trademark as federally registered. We can definitely help you with that. We handle more complex litigation as well. Yeah, and I don't, and the reason why I love coming into groups and just allowing you guys to pick my brain is because a lot of times what happens is people will be like, hey girl, what do you think about this? Um, well, my friend told me that I could do it this way. And I'm like, oh no, no, baby, what is you doing? That's wrong, right? Mm -mm. But people don't know any better. Everybody's just trying to help. You know, and they're just giving information that may have worked for them. Like, for example, I had one young lady and her trademark, very rare, but it, it's taken like, gosh, almost two years, right? It's very rare that that happens. Out of 316 trademarks I filed, hers is the second longest. But she went and she was telling people, why is my trademark taking so long? They're like, girl, it should take nine months. It should take 12 months. She has a very unique trademark that had very unique issues attached to it. So, of course, hers took longer, but she didn't provide that information. And sometimes one fact that you give an attorney can change their entire analysis. We ain't trying to switch it up on y'all. It's just really that you could say something. I'm like, oh, okay, well, now that changes everything, right? Um, so, yeah, do, 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 do. Miranda says, I have a flower business. Can another flower business have my same name and both of us have LLCs? Yes, that's totally possible. Especially if, Miranda, you are only operating your flower business in your unique state or a particular state. And you're not operating in the same state as that other flower business and you're not serving people there. Then, yes, you guys can have the same name. Also, if you don't have a federal trademark trying to stop people, then, yeah, you can. that can be the issue, too. Right. So um, I'm going to hop into the contracts piece real quick um, and open it up for more Q&A. But I wanted to just drop that link and I'm going to just update the links too at the top of the free legal consultation because that legal consultation that I do on Thursday is going to dive like I feel like I just need ex just time to only talk about contracts like because there's so many different little nuances that can happen when it comes to contracts especially in light of coronavirus um when you guys first came on i was talking about my client and i had to help her and um you know she basically had a bride and groom their original so y'all listen to this i feel like i'm gossiping but i'm not their original wedding was like five people right so they were gonna have not too many people there then they said hey my mama and them they can't make it well it wasn't even really them it was like my mama and one other person they can't make it okay and um they said all right hey we can still give you provide you with services respecting social distancing we're going to be under 10 people right so the gathering won't be banned because it's going to be the bride the groom and the officiant we can still be there to support you and they were like no we want a full refund so they were saying it's impossible you're not going to be able to provide your services due to the quarantine and the state laws and i'm thinking like well how can the officiant provide his services if you're saying that the wedding plan is impossible for her to provide her services you know and then 
you're only going to have three people at the wedding. The husband and the bride. Uh, yeah, the bride and the groom and then the, the officiant. That's it. You ain't even going to have, you know, your mom and them there, you know. So they were saying, we want a full refund. And I drafted this contract for this young lady two years ago. And I had put a really strong clause in there that said, hey, in the event the wedding is canceled or there are circumstances that happen outside of the couple's control, that, you know, you can either reschedule or you will get a 10% refund. And I said that full refunds are not possible for wedding and event planning services because, as you all know, the majority of the services are done before the wedding even gets there y'all just showing up and doing what you do best right on the day of the wedding but you were planning the whole time you got timelines y'all were visiting folks tasting cake having a good time the wedding planner should be compensated for that we understand that the wedding was not going to go off like you originally wanted to but all the work that they did up until that point, they should be compensated for it. And the bride and the groom basically were saying, we don't agree with the contract. We don't want to pay. And I was like, uh, and then they had an attorney. I don't even know why. It must have been a family attorney. I feel like I'm gossiping, but I'm not. But they had an attorney. <laughs> and she emailed my clients and she's like, we're requesting a full refund. And now this attorney did something like, she did bankruptcy law. And I was like, why don't you just stay in your lane? Like this ain't this this was not even her street. She shouldn't have been in the on the road. Okay. And so I had to politely respond in a very nice way. And I just said, okay, this is what this contract says. Point A, point B, point C, and uh look at C subsection two. Please don't try us. Okay, let's not do this. And so that contract was very powerful. Unfortunately, I believe that the bride and groom were trying to get over on my client and we were able to help them. But because she had a really strong drafted contract, she was able to overcome that. And so that's the second thing that I want to share with you guys today. Um, I, I, I opened this up for y'all, okay? I just want y'all to know because I love y'all, even though I just met y'all. So... I, through Business Bakery, what I've done is I've created a contract template website. And the, I just dropped the link. I opened this up just for y'all, okay? Don't tell. I mean, you can tell other people. But I, I only opened it up for you guys because I wanted to provide you with some contract templates. Of course, they are for sale. They're 40% off right now. When I open up the shop on Thursday, they ain't going to be 40% off. Trust and believe me, okay? <laughs> but I have contract templates like wedding and event planner contract templates that have those clauses in there that I was talking about that are really good that will protect you in the event like you're not able to perform or the coronavirus occurs or something crazy like that. And so I was going to wait and then I was like, uh, I'll go ahead and I'll open it up. And so we have contract templates for people who are providing one-on-one -on -one services, who are wedding and event professionals, who if you just need a standard client services agreement, you might need to even update agreements like for independent contractors, like people who work with you um, when it comes to the wedding and events and stuff like that. So I went on ahead and I said, let me just open it up for the people, you know. <laughs> so that will be available um, to you all until this Wednesday at midnight. Okay, and so you can go to that link and I'll post it again um, in the comments and you'll be able to shop the templates. And then the other link that I posted earlier is a free legal consultation. And so you can go and you can schedule for the legal consultation and that's going to be on Thursday. And that's where I'm going to really dive deep into the contractual provisions that you need. And of course, Obviously, I'm going to open up the opportunity, the shop to everybody else, but it won't be 40% off. It might be like 20% off or whatever. So um, I just wanted to thank everybody for showing up. I know this is really, really tough, especially for people in your industry. And so I wanted to make sure that I was able to provide you all with at least some type of solutions. Because let's be honest, y'all. Attorneys are expensive. I get it. You know, we go to school for a long time. And as you can see, I, I feel like you all see the value that I bring, right, to the table because 
Um, I have a lot of knowledge. I know this industry, right? So it doesn't mean that attorneys who are priced high or <laughs> they're charging for their services are outside of reach. It's just more so that I wanted to create the business bakery so we could provide the sweetest legal solutions for you and your business. So not only will we provide contract templates, we are also going to um, also um, provide free training. So I want to do some free training and have other people who come in and do free training because like it would be great to have someone coming in to talk about taxes, somebody else coming in and talking about financial planning and things like that. So in the coming months, I want you guys to stay connected to the bakery because it's not just a contract templates website. It's going to be a resource hub for entrepreneurs. And then we're also going to provide free resources as well. Um, so that's what that is. So I, I want to pause. Um, I really... If I can, I always love to answer all questions that folks have. I'm also going to make sure that I create like a separate, um, sorry, my nose is stopped up. Sorry. Um, I'm going to create a separate post too that has these links so things don't get lost. Um, but I want to pause and I just want to make sure that I answer your questions. If there was something you asked that I didn't get to, I'm going to try to scroll back up, but feel free to just drop it again. Uh, someone said stay in your lane that's the conclusion yeah they needed to do that like i was like can y'all not do this you know and i just don't like i don't like when people i just don't like injustice tyanek tyanek um you said is there any way that we can retain you for one-on-one -on -one services where's the link for that you better request the link yes ma'am don't mind if i do i will be posting that um, as well. So if you want one-on-one -on -one services, that is going to be through my law firm, which is the creatorslawfirm.com. So I'm like y'all, I got two different businesses, two different things going on. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. I mean, I love still, I love sharing information and helping people like that's, that just brings me so much joy to be able to talk to people. Um, uh, Janisha, yes, the contracts are customizable. You will be able to add your logos. You'll be able to add your business information or even upload it, uh, to like a site like Dubsado, which I use Dubsado a lot. So you can, um, customize them. Um, like Misha bought a contract and she was like, Decora, there's something wrong. And I was like, oh, let me fix it. So all I ask is that you guys give me some grace. I'm still working through some kinks. So if you see something and you purchase a template and you say, hey, it's missing something or, you know, uh, what does this mean? Y'all give me some grace, please. Um, and just bring it to my attention and I will fix it. Trust me, I will. Cause I want you all to be happy, um, with anything that you, um, get in connection with me. Um, so just make sure, you know, I'm just saying, let me set expectations. Y'all better. Be, thank you. I receive your blessing. Thank you. Um, and I just, I just want everybody to, to move forward with the power that they need when it comes to protecting your brand because your businesses are your legacies. I want us to transition from looking at our businesses as side hustles and hobbies and things of that nature and really saying, okay, you know, this is something that can create economic freedom for my family. And do I have the appropriate legal structure in place to make sure that I am not missing out on uh, certain things? Like a lot of people who are sole proprietors and they were trying to apply for like the PPP and the EIDL loan, guess what happened? <laughs> they weren't able to obtain all the funds because they didn't have the appropriate business structure. They kept running into walls because they didn't have a really strong legal foundation, right? And so we just never know when the legal foundation and things of that nature are going to work in our favor. Um, that's another thing about S-Corps. If you form an S-Corp, the bank looks at it a little bit differently. Let's see. And Tawana says, what happens if I start the trademark process? And someone comes in and assumes the name before I'm registered. Well, if you started the trademark process and you still have superior rights and you'll be able to send them a cease and desist, even if the trademark has not been fully registered. Why? Because you are the person to file your application first. You were the first, in, first person to assert your rights first. Here's the thing, guys. People think, well, I, I filed my LLC and I secured my social media handle, so I have superior rights over the name. Wrong wrong no trademark rights will attach and give you superior rights in two different circumstances the first once you file your trademark application 
you will start to have rights that will attach even if you're not using the trademark. So basically you can file like two different trademark types and it can be like, hey, I'm, I'm filing this application because I've been using this business name for years or for a day or for months. And so I'm already using it and I have proof of how I'm using it. Or you can say, I got this great idea. I got a great name. I don't want anybody to take it. I intend to use the name in the future. And you can file what's called an intent to use trademark application right? And let's just say you file your trademark application. Let's say you're not even using your business name yet. You prepare, you prepare to launch in six months or so. And somebody else comes and you file your trademark application in April. Somebody comes along in May and they say, hey, I have my business. I'm going to start providing wedding and event planning services underneath this business name. But it's the name that you filed a trademark application for. You can tell them cease and desist I've already filed a trademark for this name because basically the trademark application process is you getting in line before somebody, right? And so that's the power. You, you don't even have to make a sale. Like some people feel like, well, I've registered the LLC. That means I have, I have superior rights to a trademark. No, it doesn't. Trademark rights only attach or start once you file your trademark application or you provide your services first. Whichever one comes first, the person wins the race. So you can start providing uh, your, your services, your wedding and event planning services first. Somebody else comes along and files a trademark application later. Because you provided your services first, assuming it's across state lines, then you have superior rights and you can petition to cancel or oppose their trademark application. You really don't want to even put yourself in that situation when it comes to opposing a trademark. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if you got to oppose a trademark, you need to go ahead and probably set aside about $25,000. And everybody got time for that. That's just a whole lot of money to be giving somebody. Okay? Even if you're giving it to me. <laughs> it's just a lot of money. It would just be easier for you to trademark the, the name, get that over with, get that process started. Now, you don't have to pay someone 25k off top, but I'm just saying it can get up to that point because the attorney has to file multiple filings. It's like litigation. It's like going to court, and court cases can get expensive. You're welcome, Tawanda. Carolyn says, I'm going to relook at this video. Yes, yeah, save it. Watch it again. Oh, your daughter's name is Takori. That's so cute. Oh, I did. Janisha, I pronounced your name correctly. Well, it's a very melodious name. And um, my name is Takora. So I've had my fair share of people just not even trying. I'm like, you're not even going to make a concerted effort to pronounce my name. You're not even going to try. You're not even going to honor me. Okay, I see you. You know, Tamika says, if we have our own contract, can you look at it? And if so, what's your, your fee? Generally, if I review somebody's contract, like review and redline it, it might be 40 to $50 a page. So sometimes it's just like, let me just go ahead and buy this template. <laughs> Julia says, how do you start a trademark on your business name? Um, you, it's too complicated for me to tell you right now. Honestly, it's just, it's not. There's just a lot going on with that. You would first need to make sure, the first question we should always ask is, does the name that I want to trademark, is it even available? Can I even use it? So that's the first question you have to ask before you file a trademark application. It is a long process, but it's definitely worth it, especially when it comes to securing immediate brand awareness and market share for your business. Yeah, and Tawanda, you said you're, it, it, it will take a while. Hopefully your attorney will provide you with some updates, but honestly, a lot of it is the attorney waiting to hear back from the trademark office. So it's not that the, a lot of times it's not that the attorney um, isn't doing the right thing. They're just literally waiting to hear back. <laughs> and sometimes some of them attorneys don't know what they're doing. You know, I, I have a new client and I was like, I don't know what, I don't know what this young lady was doing. You know, let me fix this. So I have to fix her trademark. Um, so I'm going to answer a few more questions. We're around nine o'clock. I love that y'all are still on. I'm going to drop the links again to the contract shop. And then I'm also going to drop the link to, oh, I can pin. Can I pin this comment? No, I can't pin. Oh, yes, I can. 
and then I'm going to drop the link to the free legal consult and then I'm going to see if I can also drop the link to my law firm so you guys can get that too. Sweet. Oh, I think I can only pin one comment at a time. Womp womp. I'm going to answer a few more questions. Carolyn said, and I'm sorry, I'm looking at my laptop, so that's what I'm doing. Carolyn says, I put my business name in the paper for four weeks and nobody claimed it. So that does that mean that I can move forward with it and then get a trademark? You must be in New York because New York is that only place that does that publication stuff. Is that where you at? Uh, that doesn't mean that you can like, you can move forward the trademark process. You just still need to make sure that you can get the trademark and that means that you need to have it's part of me guys my nose is starting to get stopped up um you need to have a comprehensive trademark clearance search done d says thank you lorna for inviting to cora you're so sweet i love y'all and i can certainly come back if you guys like are like hey can you come back and do just a talk about this legal stuff totally happy for that so I'm going to make like, I'm going to just have to make a separate post where y'all can follow me on social media because I love to just share and drop gems. And so you can say, I got some really solid legal information from this person. I can apply it to my brand. You can also turn it around and share it with other entrepreneurs in your network. Those are the things that I really want to happen because too many times have I seen people moving and operating off erroneous information. Vanessa says, I'm an LLC and S Corp. Register my trademark. You better go ahead. Legal Shield sent a cease and desist letter to the other company who's using my name in Arizona. I believe he is within his right to use my name because you're in Philadelphia. Well, you know, Legal Shield, um, you, you have to look into it because there's a, a Don Donut case uh, that, that talks about this. So, um, you should have been advised of that. So I don't know what the unique circumstances are there. Um, they, they may say, hey, if you don't have any customers in Philadelphia, uh, or sorry, Pennsylvania, then hey, maybe you're not in, um, they're not in violation. I have to blow my nose. I'm so sorry. I feel like so unladylike having to just excuse myself for a moment. But give me a second and keep asking questions. Sorry, I feel like it's out. I'm allergic to like pollen, and I feel like it's like it's hitting me all at once. Um, so awesome sauce. Let me see. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna answer like two more questions. <laughs> Carolyn, thank you. You said be yourself and blow your nose. Please, thank you for not judging me. Everybody needs a Carolyn in their life. Uh, oh, Carolyn. Yeah, you know what? New York and California have the craziest LLC publication laws. I'm like, I don't even have, like, I'm like, oh, you want to file your LLC in New York or California? I'm not helping. I'll send you to some good people, though. Awesome sauce. Any other final questions, guys, before I hop off? I'm going to make sure that you have all the links and you can follow me um, and all that good stuff. I'm on Instagram underneath my name. Um... And um, so I have two Instagram pages, one for the law firm, one for Takora Davis. I post all sorts of stuff on Takora Davis, encouraging stuff, legal stuff, family stuff. Um, I'll make sure that you guys have my Facebook information. All that jazz. And here is... I should just be smart and just make one comment and then pin it all to the top, right? So I'm going to do that. <laughs> uh, 
Well, listen, um, you guys were really awesome. I really enjoy having you guys tonight. Um, make sure that you join me for that free legal consultation on Thursday. I'm going to really dive deep into the contracts. And if you know you need to update your agreements or if you need some new contract templates, go ahead and just shop uh, a little early. Get a little early access to uh, you know the Business Bakery contract shop. If there's something that's not there... And you say, gosh, I would really enjoy that. I, I really need this template or there's something that you want me to discuss or you just say, hey, what are your thoughts on this? Feel free to shoot me a message. Um, I would love to be able to share that and share my smarts with you guys. It was such a pleasure coming into this community. Lorna, thank you so much for sharing these amazing people with me and allowing me to come and share my smarts with your platform. I don't take that lightly. Um, it seems like an awesome, awesome place to... Dianisha, you better say that my contract is the bomb. She was like, listen, y'all better get into this. Let's go. <laughs> so you all have an amazing, amazing evening and a blessed evening. Uh, love you guys so much. And I'll chat with you soon.